one of the ways that I look at consciousness from a scientific perspective is actually to start with homeostasis. So we have all these systems in the body and they need to have a kind of homeostatic balance. For example, body temperature. Body temperature needs to be in a pretty tight range. You know, we get a temperature that goes up five or 10 degrees or drops five or 10 degrees and we're in trouble. Hydration, nutrition, on and on and on and on and on. So what happens when an organism's homeostatic balances go out, they either correct those or they die. That's pretty simple. One of the quickest ways to get our attention is to make us hurt. And that, that's a great motivator to do something about it. And so you can have a very simple creature, you know, maybe a small worm or an ant or something like that that would have a bunch of these little homeostatic systems that go out of balance and there's automatic push to go take care of that. You get into something like a human being and we just have hundreds and thousands of homeostatic systems. And so when one of those goes out of balance, rather than being driven directly to satisfy that, if a hydration is low to drive so they get some water or something, with so many systems, they're going to conflict with each other. So what arises in us is a feeling of discomfort, which indicates that some of our systems are going out of balance. And as we balance in those, it feels good. And so we get these mass of feelings that give us some directions, but with a system as complicated as we are, there's no one solution that's going to be best every moment. And so we get a little bit of choice as to, okay, I'm hungry. There's an apple over there. There's a bear walking down the path towards the apple tree. I think I'll get away from the bear and come back and get the apple later. So we decide which one we're going to pay attention to. And out of that is how consciousness emerges. It's this system of weighing all these uh, different feelings that I'll that arise. And the interesting thing about it is that it's really based on keeping us alive. So there's no way to avoid this stuff. Mm. So this is kind of the workspace theory of consciousness, right? Or I think it also right. relates to uh, information integration theory, where there's this, you can think about consciousness as this kind of knowing element, this kind of space in which we're getting all these different signals, some of them conflicting. And then so it can know all of that and make choices or determine where to go from there. Almost this biological imperative to have another layer in the system that can make judgments and understand all these pieces of evidence that are coming. Right. So the alternative to that is if you don't take care of it, then you die and those genes don't get passed on. But that takes a long time for things to evolve. So what happened at some place in time was there was this system and what humans are particularly good at or what the human brain is particularly good at is creating models of what's going on out there in the world. And it's been a sort of survival mechanism. So I get this model. There's a hungry animal over there. I wonder what happened if I held my arm up to it. Well, rather than actually test it out, I can do that in my mind and realize, okay, that probably is not going to work so well. So we'll, you know, we won't do that one. So it, it gives this, you know, I should say, a kind of workspace where we can uh, kind of make decisions. Um, but I always like to go back to homeostasis because it ties it back to survival, which puts it right back into the, the core of what it means to be a living organism. I think in your book, Doug, you mentioned there's these kind of primal emotions these very deeply embedded survival instincts that can kind of give rise to very, very primal feelings, for example, fear. And this would go back many thousands and even millions of years as the nervous system evolved. How, how does that play into consciousness? Well, it's um, the most direct way to say it is the work of Jak Pengsep, who was an Estonian American, I think it was at Washington University. Um, and um, 
and he was sort of at his peak during the time when you know reward and punishment was 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 the big deal, and in those uh, in those kind of schemes, the behaviorists that look at reward and punishment think of emotions as being too abstract. You know, they were just making all this stuff up. But he was interested in trying to trace down the biological organism、uh, origins of these emotions. And what he found was that there are six or seven of them, of which there are actually nodes in the brain. That if you go in there, you know, with a tiny scalpel or electric probe and burn that out, then that emotion is gone. So for, or you can go the other way, just go in there and stimulate it. So you can take a cat who is. Sleepy and lazing around,、uh, and if you get a little probe into the rage centers and just stimulate that, suddenly the cat goes <laughs> and it just flies into rage. There's nothing else happens. A little electricity in there. So、uh, he found seven of these that that show up in all mammals. And the interesting thing about it, if you go in and you take out all seven of those nodes. The creature goes unconscious. I mean, there just is no consciousness, you know, with, without these seven being active. And then those seven can be modified and stuff by cerebral cortex and, and lots of other things. But it just makes a point at a very primal level. Without these things,、uh, we go into a coma. There is there is no consciousness. I guess that matches on, you know, referencing back to the Buddha and his theory of. Codependent arising or dependent origination that、uh, consciousness is conditioned by proto thoughts and these kind of、uh, urges, almost you could say. I mean, this was him observing subjectively his mind, so he's looking at how his attention moves in a very deep meditative state, which is a bit different than our kind of objective probing. And I guess we can't know for certain that the correlation, like just because those. The experience of awareness shuts off、uh, when these brain circuits aren't active. Doesn't mean those brain circuits cause the consciousness itself, but it is interesting that there are prior conditions that are necessary for the light of、right. awareness to be on there. Right. 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 <laughs>